dangerous. Hi guys. Um, welcome to this draw with me. Um, I just wanted to open this up by saying that I actually filmed this about two weeks ago and um, make sure that there we go. All right. I feel like it would be I don't know how to say it like dishonest if I didn't say, state that my dad died since filming this. Um, yeah. I don't know really what else to say about that. Um, I'm doing a little better today, uh, but it varies from moment to moment. Um, and that news came just after the news that my sister's best friend committed suicide. Like literally less than 48 hours, like she committed suicide. And then my dad died. I just, I don't really want to talk about it to like, like on the internet. Yeah, I, I did have some things that were already on my mind that I'm gonna talk about in this video, but I don't know. I just kind of wanted to <clears throat> state that and let you guys know what's going on because it's just like one of those things that it's like, you don't know, but I know that this is on my mind. Um, and to not mention it in this video would just, feels wrong, you know? I don't know how else to say that. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be a real time video of me drawing with a voiceover of me just um, letting out all my thoughts and feelings on various topics. So uh, if you would be so kind as to stick around to the end, uh, you could put this on while you uh, do dishes or chores or you're studying or you're drawing. You could actually draw with me if you wanted to. Um, and I don't know, let's just like, let's Pretend that we are socializing 2021 style. Um, yeah. Hi guys, welcome to the voiceover. Um, sorry if my voice is a little raspy as I'm recording this. It's a kind of early in the morning for me at least. Well, okay, it's not early. It's just that it's one of those mornings where you're just having trouble getting it together and getting going so I might have to pause in the middle of this voiceover to get make some more coffee but I kind of wanted to talk about just some feelings about um, authenticity and trying to find a style and rediscovery of your myself and all that kind of stuff um, so yeah, basically I had watched this video not long ago um, from this YouTube channel called Psych IRL and it was about Jenna Marbles um, after she left YouTube. I don't know if she's back yet um, or, you know, I haven't seen any videos about her coming back, but I assume, I assume she's still gone. But, um, and just how her leaving YouTube may be, as they put it, the death of authenticity. Um, and yeah, it's, so it's just like one of those things that as I'm trying to build up my own career through social media, I've been thinking about it a lot. And it's like, you know, one of the main um, pieces of advice when you're trying to build a presence on any social media outlet is to be authentic and be yourself and um it's just it's difficult right now at least for me to want to be myself because like cancel culture is just in full swing right now and it almost feels like anything you do or say can be used against you in some way and get you canceled. And you know, I'm like, 
I don't know how serious it is in the long run. Like I know for some people it like actually does affect their careers, but it, so far it seems like a lot of the big YouTubers that have been canceled seem to bounce back. Like, I don't know. Um, but it's like, it's just hard to, to want to be yourself. And then there's that aspect of like how much of yourself should you put online and how much should you not like realistically speaking nobody is perfect and like everybody's gonna have something that other people are gonna disagree with like an opinion on something or they'll have done something or you know um so it's like one of those things like you can't please everybody but you still have to wonder like okay i can't please everybody but am i going to tick off a lot of people in the process and get canceled and then ruin my entire career <laughs> you know um so it's just like it's a difficult thing because it's like <sighs> there's been a lot of like big life changes for me uh in the recent years like just getting married and moving out and taking on new jobs and having a kid. And it's like during those big life changes, um, you know, I don't know if whoever's listening to this has gone through that, but like you start to, at least for me, I kind of have had an identity crisis and had to wonder like, okay, how do I still be me, but also be a wife? How do I still be me, but also be a mom? You know, and it's like trying to reconcile those two aspects of my identity and like incorporate it into my being, you know, um, it's, uh, it's been a difficult thing for me, to be honest. Like, I feel like I kind of like lost track of who I am, if that makes sense. Like, like... I know it's like not something that people are saying to my face of like, oh, you have to be like this or you have to be like that. But still like there's that social pressure or like, you know, you see a post on Instagram, you see a YouTube video, you see your friends who are just like way better at just generally being a human than you. And then you're just like, man, like maybe I should be more like them. Um, and that gets into like this feeling I've been having of like, the pressure to conform. Um, I've always like at the core been a non-conformist, you know, but even non-conformists within their own social group are conformists, um, which is kind of ironic, right? But, uh, you know, being somebody who tends to deviate from the norm I've always, um, like, I don't know. Okay, this is gonna get into some stuff and I know my family is watching, so like, please don't take offense to this, but um, like, my family was very much the kind of people that's like, if you were different from them, then it's bad. And I was like, the person in my family who's, who was different. And so, like, I grew up with this external voice telling me that, like, who I am is not good. And, like, because I am not a conformist, I am therefore a rebel and I am bad. And um, that wasn't true. Just, like, uh, let's just get that out there. I wasn't a bad kid. I just wasn't, like, you know uh average kid i guess and that makes me sound so pretentious i was just a we i was a weird kid i was just a weird kid that's what it was um so even now like i still have this voice in my head telling me like that i like i have the the this dichotomy of like my inner self that wants to be different and then the outer self that is telling me that I have to conform. And it's like, so as I've been on this 
journey of, you know, trying to figure out who I am again. Um, you know, I've been kind of like getting, tr wanting to explore like my personal style, not just in my art, but also like in my clothing and in uh, interior design, like, you know, making up my, like, decorating my house and stuff like that and um you know it's just like I've been trying to explore that and in the process of trying to explore that you come across you know like inspiration pictures on Pinterest and then you want to make your house look like somebody on Pinterest and then here you are you know basically following in someone else's footsteps again. And I want to get away from that. I want to get away from like, you know, trying to look like I'm trying to be an aesthetic 20 something or an art hoe. I don't know if that's still a thing anymore, but it was when I was a teen uh, or cottage core or uh, just regular chic or bohemian or whatever, you know? Um, so, I've been wanting to try to get away from that, but then I also, you know, there's still that voice in my head telling me like, you, you still need to be presentable to society. And I'm like, but like, how far is too far? You know, like, <laughs> um, yeah. So I just like, I've been finding myself consuming a lot of content on Instagram that makes me view myself a certain way and like I just start to lose my I, I've been feeling like the more content I consume in the process of trying to figure out what I like and who I am the more ironically I lose track of myself and what I like you know because when I was young uh I mean not that I'm that old but you know in my early teen years, Pinterest wasn't really a thing. Like, I remember finding out about Pinterest when I was like 16. And at the time, it was still a website that like you had to be invited to get on the platform. Like, I don't know if anybody remembers those days, but it like, you know, it was one of those days like, oh, I can't just get on Pinterest. I have to be invited by somebody who's already on Pinterest. Wow, so exclusive. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, that's something that I've been kind of, you know, struggling with, um, you know, going through uh, probably a 10th identity crisis as I uh, step into motherhood as and after having a child. Um, so, yeah. And then that gets into like wanting to share, like it gets into my, my feelings of social media because it's like, you know, I've been wanting to uh, share my work on Instagram um, and like, I do feel kind of self-conscious about my work on Instagram because like, or on any social media platform really, because I don't have a defined style yet. And um, like a lot of these artists that I've been looking at, they have a defined style and I feel like I want to copy what they're doing just so that I can like kind of see like I know a lot of people have been talking about this um Skillshare class on on, on Skillshare obviously um by Andy Pizza I think is the guy's name about finding your style and somebody said that he described it as like feeling like you're at home um and I think that's a good description of it and my Feelings of being self-conscious when it comes to my work comes from like just not feeling like I've found a home with my art and you know seeing other people on Instagram and YouTube and all that who have clearly found their style and then you know I know I shouldn't compare my journey to theirs like you shouldn't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle and that's all fine and good but then at the same time it makes me feel like maybe i shouldn't post my work on instagram because i don't have a style yet um but then that's like 
kind of stupid because then it's like you shouldn't wait until you're 100% ready to like put yourself out there to start putting yourself out there like I know I should be putting myself out there uh before I'm ready if I'm ever going to make this a career because the only way that I'm going to build this up is just start even though it's like not going to be pretty like it just got to start you know um yeah so and I know I say this as I'm like you know drawing this girl with the braids and some people are gonna be like what are you talking about it's not pretty and it's like you know i get it i get it i just feel like this isn't my style uh i don't feel like this is my home with art um you know and uh not that i don't like what i'm drawing but i just don't feel like this is what i would uh want to be doing forever like i feel like uh, like this is just an exploration basically i don't know um yeah so i don't know i just, i have trouble when it comes to um social media and different stuff like that um because when i was in my later teen years like probably around 18 19 i guess or no i feel like i probably was a touch older like maybe 20 well, not that it matters but um i started to have this feeling of like not really wanting to post on social media anymore because like for a couple reasons i felt like a lot of the people that i had on my personal instagram um there were a lot of people that i hung out with in my like mid-teen years and I didn't really have a super close relationship with them. And I just kind of felt like, why should I keep posting my personal life on this platform for a lot of people who don't even care enough to pick up the phone and give me a call? You know, like why do they deserve to know so much about me and my life um, when they don't really care enough to have a conversation with me, you know? Um, and then secondly, I start like, it sounds, maybe this is stupid, but like, I, I, I live by movie quotes. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but like, like sometimes they're just, there's just something somebody says in a movie and it hits me in a certain way. And I, I recently rewatched the movie that like, kind of changed my perspective on social media and maybe this sounds stupid but it was the secret life of walter mitty love that movie i could watch it like a million times and never get tired of it um but the the uh what's his name sean o'connell is that his name in the movie i don't know it was the photographer guy that walter mitty was trying to chase down and when he finally found him like you know towards the end of the film um spoilers if you haven't seen this i guess but not that it's like a super big deal but um he is in i think the himalayas and he's trying to take a photo of a snow leopard that like nobody's ever gotten a photo of before in history and so he's like sitting on a mountaintop with his camera and finally they see the snow leopard and he could have taken the shot but instead of taking the shot he just watched and walter was like dude why aren't you taking a shot take a shot and he was like sometimes i don't take the shot sometimes i just like to live in this moment and that like line i was like whoa because <laughs> i realized that like you know, everybody is so concerned with taking photos of every single moment that they don't actually get to enjoy the moment. And I was just, I got tired of having to stop every little thing that I'm doing with my friends to take a photo of a moment and post about it. Cause then it just doesn't feel genuine anymore. Of course there are like some things that like, you know, Looking back, I do wish I had photos of it, but not that like I necessarily needed to post every single thing that I was doing. Um, and so I just kind of got tired of that aspect 
of social media and how it just made me feel when I was with friends of that rather than enjoying my time with friends, I felt like I had to be taking photos of every single thing I was doing with my friends and posting it. And it just, it, it took me out of the moment, you know? It's kind of like, um, I have this video on um, what I'm making my vlog channel of uh, a time that I went to uh, a concert with my friend. Um, we were designated concert buddies and um, I paid our way to go to see my favorite artist, Lord. Um, hopefully she'll be coming out with an album soon. I'm waiting for her third album drop. I think it's coming out this year. Anyways, I digress. Um, like, I didn't film any of the concert except for my favorite song because I, I wanted to be able to go back and relive that moment. However, because I was recording it, I wasn't able to fully enjoy the song being sung while I was at the concert. You know what I mean? Because I was so focused on making sure I captured it on video. And like you could see it in that video if you go to my you know second channel and watch it like you could see there are moments where I'm clearly not focused on recording because like I you know the camera tilts up too far and you lose track of um, Lord and her singing but anyways it's like yeah so that was a very long tangent to say that like I find it difficult to to be on social media and be involved in, um, you know, with commenting and commenting on other people's posts and posting all my work and stuff like that. Because like, I already have like this view of social media that like I'm fighting against. And it's like, I know I have to fight against it to be able to build up my career as an artist. And I'm hoping at some point, maybe I can like, you know, either get away from having to post everything on social media or just have somebody else who who I pay to do it because I really dislike the feeling that it gives me you know so yeah and then um let's see where am I at with my notes I have notes here of what I wanted to talk about um yeah so with that being said I do have like some ideas of things that I want to do this year on social media, like different themes of like what I want to do month by month. Um, and like, you know, making big paintings and small paintings and landscapes and sketchbook stuff. I have like, I came up with kind of an idea of how I can possibly manage to post TikToks and reels like once every weekday, maybe. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I, I'm, I'm trying to get my TikTok kicked off, um, but you know, I just have like so many different social medias right now that I'm trying to um, like start being active on. And it's kind of overwhelming because I feel like there's so much work to do uh, that I don't know, like, oh, I don't know if I want to do any of it. My, my response when I get too stressed out, when like there's just an overwhelming workload, you know how like people, they have the fight or flight response. Well, I have the third response, which is to freeze. So like when I get too overwhelmed with a, the amount of work that needs to be done, I just do nothing. <laughs> so I'm just trying to like manage my expectations and take it one thing at a time. Um, and you know just uh see what i can do to like start being more active on those like social media channels um and like start building up a, a like what's it called a library or something of content i don't know um yeah and i know i need to get on tiktok because that's like popping off these days so <sighs> yeah um yeah and then i i do worry about like wanting i have a lot of worries guys i'm so sorry i have a lot of anxiety and i just i'm trying to like tamper my anxiety but like there's times where it's like i just can't help it um you know i i worry a little bit about um like the fine line between drawing inspiration from other people's art and then making artwork that's like way too similar to theirs. Um, 
but like I see so many people doing like really awesome stuff on Instagram and it's like dude I would love to try that and see how it feels for me and like if there's anything that I can take from their style to incorporate in my own um and I, like I feel like that's the route that you just have to go to develop a style um you know and like speaking of movie quotes that like I take probably way too seriously <laughs> but um Alice in Wonderland the, the Tim Burton version with Johnny Depp okay follow me here um there's a line in that movie where the Mad Hatter aka Johnny Depp tells Alice that she used to be much muchier and then later on he tells her that she lost her muchness and I remember when I was about 19, I was friends with a woman in my congregation who was much older than me. And she referenced that line. She's saying like that I lost my muchness. And at the time, like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, sure, yeah, whatever. And like, it wasn't until after she said that, that like, I watched that movie again and it hit me way harder because like I said, I've always had this push and pull between wanting to be myself and feeling like I have to be like everyone else. And like, um, like throughout these explorations, I, I just want to like find my muchness again, you know, like I want to find that thing that I used to have when I was a young, a youngin, a young teenager, if you will. Um, that was just like, I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to do me. And like, I just feel like over the, the time I've lost that. Um, and I want to find that again. I want to find my muchness. Um, and that like saying has been on my heart recently. And um, like, yeah, I feel like I want to make some art inspired by that quote. Um, yeah, just like wanting to experiment with stylization in my art and my wardrobe and like home decorating and stuff like that. Like I want to like, I, I just want to live in a way that is like, this is me. This isn't anybody else. This is me, you know, like I don't want my wardrobe and like my home and my art to look like everybody else's stuff on the social media is like, I want it to look like me. I want people to look at it and be like, that's Allison, you know? Like, and I feel like everybody wants that, you know? I don't know if you know, but you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's something I've been thinking about lately. Um, just trying to find myself again and trying to find a way to um, incorporate that in my art stuff you know, we can see it and be like, yeah, that's her. So that, that's, uh, that's the big rant that I had about life and things. Um, I was hoping that I would be able to talk to myself long enough, uh, to fill up this s s 55 some odd minutes. Um, looks like I, I did not have quite as much juice as I thought I would. So maybe I can just come up with some random other rants for you <laughs> while I filibuster this. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I've been like trying to explore a little more with interior decorating and such. Um, not that I've been doing just a whole lot of it just cause like, all of that stuff, it takes time to build up and money and things. Um, so, sorry, I'm getting distracted by this noise from the video. So I'm gonna turn this down a little touch. Um, Cause I, while I was filming this, I was trying to film a Instagram reel. Um, and I think I accidentally deleted that one, whoops. Um, yeah, I did upload my first Instagram reel while I was uh, drawing this, so that was pretty cool. Um, 
but yeah, so just trying to to build up my wardrobe and um make over my house but it, that kind of stuff costs money and it takes time so we'll get there we'll get there eventually um i'm excited about notion i recently discovered notion this is not sponsored at all of course because i have like no following so why would they sponsor me but um <laughs> i discovered notion from apple cheeks uh she had it in one of her videos like several months ago i'm gonna take a sip of coffee i'm sorry um but yeah it's like this app that you can use it as like like a way to organize everything in your life and there are some features that i do wish they had um that were a little better or easier to use but overall like i'm really enjoying the app um and like i did use this app or maybe i could cut this video out um i did use notion to um script out basically or like yeah script out the the talking points that I wanted to um bring up throughout this video so uh thank you Notion for helping me get my brain organized um but yeah I'm really excited about it so like have maybe I'll do a Notion tour when I've got it like fully set up um if anybody is interested I don't know if they are but if you are leave a comment if you're still listening to this um if you're still listening to this, tell me what you're doing while you're listening. Are you drawing? Are you uh, doing some chores? Are you procrastinating on something? <laughs> well, let me know. Um, and are you drinking anything? I'm drinking some coffee because I definitely have not had enough coffee yet. Um, I probably should have said all that at the beginning of this rant, but I didn't. So here we are. Um, yeah. So I'm very excited about Notion. So I have like uh, my personal dash. I have a Bible study dash because if you didn't know, I am Christian. Um, if you don't like that, but you still want to be here, that's fine. You can still be here. It's cool. Um, and I have a art business hub and I'm thinking of setting up a second business hub because me and my husband are trying to start a drop shipping business. Um, it's like slow going with the setup i gotta be honest because like it's mostly me setting it up right now and it's really tough to set it up because i got like so many irons in the fire because i'm trying to do like i'm you know of course taking care of micah and then trying to you know draw and make art for my instagrams and youtube videos and stuff like i gotta be honest guys like <laughs> it's I like the the drawing aspect and the filming aspect that's all fine but my heart like what I struggle with the most is editing I hate editing like I just want to do the thing and be done with it like I wish I could just film the video and it edited itself so like honestly when I have enough funds coming in from this channel like the first thing I'm gonna do is hire an editor because I hate editing so much like I just want to like boom 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 film done post you know like and obviously you can't do that you gotta like edit all the clips together because you've been drawing so long you ran out of battery which is what happened during the filming of this like at some point i ran out of battery um so you're gonna see like a huge jump where you just like what happened um and you know it's just it's tough it's tough uh not my favorite but it's like one of those things you gotta do it you gotta pay your dues you gotta get her in um there's just no way around it if if you if i want to make this a living because like here's my thing is currently i am on unemployment um and obviously unemployment has been extended several times because of the whole pandemic which is great for me um you can see i messed up that teacup several times <laughs> wow that was just like the worst so and i tried to put in some uh little hatching business to cover that up <laughs> these are the tricks guys these are the tricks um so what was i gonna say shoot i lost my tangent i lost my tangent i hate editing i think that's where i was going with this oh yeah you gotta pay your dues so it's like 
if I want, like, oh yeah, yeah, that's where I was going with this. Unemployment. Currently, I'm on unemployment. So that helps uh, a lot with me uh, not having to get a job so that I can be home and take care of my daughter because uh, I don't want to send her to daycare during a pandemic because I don't want to expose her to the COVID um, possibly and have her end up in, sorry, I'm moving the, the trash can. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, I was trying to use it as a footstool and I just realized you can probably hear that. So I'm gonna stop messing with that. Um, yeah, I just don't, I'm very paranoid. I'm Like I said, I'm very anxious, cautious, paranoid person. And I do not want my child to end up in the hospital or the NICU for who knows how long. Um, so I really don't wanna have to get a job cause I don't wanna have to send her to daycare. Um, so while I still have unemployment, I'm trying to build up other avenues of income um, so that once the unemployment runs out, then I can continue to stay home and take care of my daughter. Um, which, you know, I think is very important to, you know, be home with her because like, I feel like just being able to be there and provide for her needs, like helps a lot with a child's development. Um, but obviously like not everybody's able to do that. So, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And if I have to get a job, then I'll get a job. But um, I really want to like try to avoid having to do that um, once unemployment runs out. So I'm trying my best to, um, you know, take time to make sure I am like building up those other sources of income, like the drop shipping business. So yeah, that's slow going because I, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> um, I need to stop being so scared of things. Like, that's one of my hardest things is just like taking a leap of faith. Like, just do it. Just go for it. It might be scary, but like, you gotta do it. I was always a kid that's like, like, I, I will never forget this. But when I was, I don't even remember how old I was, 13, some odd, something like that. Um, me and my family, we went on a road trip. We went to Slide Rock Park in Arizona. And there was like this huge, like, drop off. Like it wasn't a cliff. Like it was, it was just like, like there was a, a rock ledge and there was a steep, like 10 or 15 foot drop into this large pool of water, which is pretty deep. So you could like literally jump off that into that pool of water, just like a diving board or something like that. And my sister did it, but I was too scared to do it. And I always regret like not doing it. And like, that is just like the, if that isn't an allegory for my life, I don't know what it is. It's cause like, lip, that's me all the time. Like, like sometimes I get so into my own head and freak myself out that like, I just, I, I just gotta do it how to do it you know um but it's something i've always had the hardest time with um so yeah <sighs> man i go off on a lot of tangents like my mom says like like especially since covid she'll come over and she'll hang out for a while and people will always be like oh yeah okay i gotta go and like i'll continue talking to them for another 15 minutes like oh yeah but before you go and <laughs> like clearly i don't get enough opportunities to talk to other humans uh, besides my husband these days. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I can just talk till the cows come home. Um, and I have a lot of thoughts and feelings on a lot of things. That was, you know, probably one of my trademarks as a, as a young teen, just had a lot of, a lot of feelings. Um, yeah. Uh, in other news, Micah has been getting a pretty good sleep schedule. So, um, she's been going to sleep at about 6.30 every night. Um, cause like I started sleep training her when she was about two months old. Cause I just could not take continually bouncing her vigorously on a yoga ball, uh, to get her to sleep. So, uh, now she has a really good sleep schedule. She goes to sleep at 6.30 almost every night. And it's great. Um, and she's starting to get a little bit more regular 
nap schedule, although it's kind of been thrown off recently because she's been teething really bad. Um, I think she's gonna put, push out her first two soon, so that's exciting. Um, but yes, so after she goes to sleep, uh, previously I was trying to take some time at night to like at least an hour to work on a project. Um, I've been working through the Sibling gouache workbook. Um, I did like the first page of actual illustrations in her workbook and now I'm working on a page of my own illustrations inspired by that first page. So her first page was a bunch of fruit. My first page in my own watercolor book is going to be a bunch of fruit, but I was think I'm going to do like California native fruits. Uh, I thought that would be fun, like avocados and um, mango and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'm working on that. I was thinking if people like it, um, if I have enough interest in it, I might make it a sticker sheet. I thought that would be fun. Um, so yeah, and then I'm gonna try pretty soon to have Juan, my husband, watch Micah for a couple hours on the weekend so I can work on, like do some filming and stuff like that while I have daylight. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do. I think I might like try to batch um, TikToks and reels on the weekends and then just like set them up to post throughout the week. So that's how what I'm thinking to do for um, that backlog of um, of content so I can start like building up those platforms. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I kind of want to do some challenges like Meds 100 Heads or a Draw 365 challenge or something like that. Um, I tried previously doing that. Like, here's the thing. I, I don't know. A while back, I went to a psychiatrist because I had been having such a hard time having the energy to do anything besides just go to work and go home and sleep. Like, I didn't really have the energy to do anything else. And it was really bugging me. Like, why is it so hard for me to do anything? Like, I, I can't even, like, I don't even have the energy to make food after work or anything. Like, you know, I don't know. So uh, my doctor had me see some, some other doctors, some specialists, and uh, couldn't find a, a physical cause for it. She was saying it's just stress, and I think she's probably right. Uh, that job was horribly stressful um and i'm glad that they let me go at the beginning of covid because i was already trying to find another job uh, <laughs> but you know uh gosh oh yeah that's what i was trying to get to <laughs> um yeah so she had sent me to a psychiatrist to see if there was like if it was depression or something like that I don't know if they actually gave me a formal diagnosis, but they were trying to put me on some sort of medication. And I was like, well, let me see if I can get this sorted out before like resorting to medication. Um, I, I think they said I was depressed. I don't know if I'm still depressed anymore, um, but I think I was depressed at the time, or at least I was on the spectrum of depression. Um, and I think... I don't, again, I don't think they ever gave me a formal diagnosis, but I think I have ADD. Or at least she said I was exhibiting symptoms of ADD. Um, so the reason I bring this up is that like, I, f I find it very hard to do anything with consistency. Like I, the only thing I do consistency is get up and get myself a cup of coffee. Like, <laughs> and of course, you know, feed my child because that's necessary and she tells me when she needs that but like as far as like me motivating myself to do things consistently like the only thing I have ever been able to do consistently is drink my coffee in the morning like this might be TMI but like even brushing my teeth I don't do with consistency and I really need to um I had to go to the dentist recently they actually said my teeth were pretty um pretty good like not nearly as bad as they were expecting considering it had been about 10 years since I had gone to the dentist so um yeah there might there are some cavities I need to get refilled um but other than that they said that like it wasn't 
nearly as scary as they were expecting it to be. So um, that's good, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so anywho, I digress. Um, I was thinking to do some uh, challenges, like like I said, Meds 100 Heads, or um, there was this challenge that was circulating on DeviantArt quite a long time ago of like, um, like hands and feet, like 50 hands and 50 feet, like challenge. Um, and then I was thinking to do, um, what was the other one? Meds Fall Fashion and, oh yeah, yeah I was saying draw, draw 365. I tried to do a Draw 365 a while back and I think I got like three days in. <laughs> does that happen to anybody else? Um, I'm sure it does. I think what I really need to do Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal my grand plan. Not that I think anybody's even listening at this point, but if you are, um, I guess you can feel free to steal my uh, my my method that I'm thinking to do. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll see. Um, what I was thinking to do is on the weekend when Juan is watching Micah for a few hours, I will batch the challenge videos for TikTok and Instagram and then like save them and then post them throughout the week like one a day that's what I'm thinking to do so we'll see how that goes and if it goes well I will uh report it in some sort of update of what I've been doing um and how that's working out for me and yeah we'll see we'll see what happens um I forgot to put the tag for this woman that I'm illustrating here, but her handle on Instagram, that was a motorcycle, I'm sorry if you heard that. Her handle on Instagram is uh, Fashion Jackson. And I know that is extremely similar to the music musical artist Fashion Jackson, but no, this is actually a girl. I think she's in Tennessee, Jackson, Tennessee. Is that, is it in Tennessee? I don't know geography that well, so somebody in the comments can correct me if you're still listening. So if you're still listening to this point, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I love you. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, in Notion, I have been um, uh, storing away like reference files as far as like one of them being, um, what's it called? <sighs> Oh, I accidentally put my content calendar. Um, one of them being a movie list. You know, I've always wanted to like watch classic movies. Like just, I want to have that knowledge base, you know, of like understanding references and being cultured or whatever. Um, and I've always wanted to like just, you know, have those under my belt, I guess. Um, but one of the, so I've been on a mission to watch uh, a bunch of movies that have been on my watch list for quite some time. And I'm like cataloging all of them in, in Notion. But, um, so I watched for the first time, I watched Rocky and my husband was absolutely appalled because he was like, how have you never seen Rocky? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, I didn't have it on DVD growing up, never caught it on TV. It's just my mom never forced me to watch it. So it's her fault, I guess. Um, but yeah, finally watch Rocky. You know, it's like, I don't know. I'm sure there are people out there who understand this, but like there are certain references that have just become integrated with the culture. Um, and I'm sure this is true of every culture, but uh, for example, in, I think this is pretty universal for English speaking countries, but um, the movie Rocky has that scene where he's like, training and he runs up the steps and it's playing that song where he's like dun, 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 dun. so like i knew that that was from rocky but i had never seen rocky and so i went ahead and watched it um it was pretty good although i would recommend if you've never seen it before to watch it with subtitles because i think without subtitles i would not have understood half of what they were saying <laughs> um yeah so because it's like super italian new york i guess um, and in the seventies. So, uh, another one that I watched was Castaway. Don't, don't know how I never saw that movie, but, uh, never did. So, 
uh, finally watched that. I like that one pretty good too. My mom said that interestingly enough, um, they stopped production on that movie uh, for a couple months uh, so that he could get into shape for the second half of the movie because at some point it cuts away and it's like, again, this is a spoiler in case you haven't watched this movie, so maybe skip ahead like a minute. Um, but it said like four years later and he like, it pans up and he's like super buff. <laughs> And like, holy cow, like how has he, and he's like made his own calendar that like tracks the, the position of the sun so he can tell what time of year it is. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so crazy. And yeah, um, that was a really good movie. And it made, like, I'm sure a lot of people thought about this at the time that it came out, but it would like made me think, would I have the skills and tenacity to be able to survive for years on an island by myself probably not i'd probably die of starvation or something or just like being too scared to explore the island because i'd be afraid of getting eaten by a wild boar or something so um because that's classic me so yeah and then dead poet society watched that one for the first time i had always seen references of it on tumblr um, cause that was a very popular, like, Tumblr movie, you know, lots of teen angst in that one, so, um, man, I really botched that flower. <laughs> I'm watching this right now, I botched it. Um, and, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, Dead Post Society. Again, spoiler, if you don't want to hear how this one ended, skip ahead, um, uh, but, uh, it made me so sad that at the end, the one kid commit suicide and it's just like it's even more like heartbreaking now uh considering at the beginning i was talking about how like my sister's friend committed suicide and it's like it's just tough and it makes me like every time this kind of stuff happens and i see like kids who are hurting that much it just makes me think of my own child now and like how i never want my daughter to feel that way that like she can't be herself um like and i never wanted her to feel like the only way for her to find peace is to take her own life you know and it's like it just really makes you think um so yeah this last one i'm doing is i think i was trying to do a, a rose I'm not very good at drawing flowers. There are lots of things I need to practice. I'm, I'm like, guys, I'm so rusty. Like, I know a lot of my friends in my, uh, you know, personal life think I'm like, you know, this amazing artist or whatever. And like, not that I'm saying I'm bad, but honestly, as I was drawing all these, I felt so rusty. Like, like my hand control is just not there. You know, I really need to practice a lot more. Um, because, like, that circle, like, did you see that circle? Oh, my God. I, like, <laughs> there's so many times I'm having to, like, kind of uh, do something in the in the drawing to, like, cover up the fact that I messed up so bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really need to, like, do some focused practice. I recently, well, I guess it's not recently. It's been a while since I listened to the book. But I listened to the audiobook Grit, Passion, the power of passion and perseverance and um it talked about how like one thing that separates uh from from their observations one thing that separates a novice from a master is not necessarily practice because there are lots of novices that practice a lot but they never really get to the master level um but it's focused practice and like intentional practice like you can practice all you want but unless you're being intentional about it you're not actually gonna get any better you know like you and that was one thing i noticed and i think i want to do like a little sketchbook tour i i have two maybe three sketchbooks that i want to finish this year like I've, I've had some sketchbooks like this one that i'm drawing and going for years um, and I really want to finish them because I'm so tired of them, like having so many blank pages and like, I don't know if, if, if anybody else who's an artist 
is watching this uh but for me when i have like some not good illustrations in my sketchbook it just makes me not even want to draw it anymore it's like oh the whole sketchbook is soiled <laughs> i must start over in a new sketchbook <laughs> moving on from this one because it's a dumpster fire trash book um but yeah so that that's oftentimes how i think of my sketchbooks when i just have too many bad drawings in them and it's like i don't even want to i don't even want to draw on this one anymore it just makes me feel bad um but I want to finish them this year. I want to do like a bunch of uh, challenges that I can like fill them up and finish them. Um, and I think when I finish them, I'm going to do like a mega sketchbook tour or something. Um, so yeah, that's my goal this year as far as like, you know, getting work done and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I need to start working on... Um, <clears throat> I need to finish the sticker sheets this, mm, I think next month because it's the 28th now. So it's definitely not gonna get finished. Oh, I started drawing a bird, you can't see it, but it did not come out at all. Like I was hoping it would, it came out pretty terrible uh, in my opinion. <clears throat> so it's a good thing you guys can't see the references because if you did, you'd be like, oh yeah, it looks nothing like a reference. <laughs> Um, or I guess I had some supplements that reference, but it's like, yeah, I can see, I can see how you messed up there. Um, oh, I got Posca markers. I'm very excited about that. Um, since my dad died, my sister got a puppy. She got a Shipu. Her name is Penny and she's very cute. Um, so since my sister got a dog, I got myself some paint markers <laughs> to console myself. Um, so I am excited about using those. Um, there's this one Instagram artist that I've been watching recently, um, or following, I guess. Uh, her name is Jillo Beans and she has a YouTube channel, but she doesn't post just a whole lot on her YouTube channel, but her artwork is amazing. And, uh, she has like such an awesome energy. Okay. Quick tangent. I have been watching Pitch Perfect recently. It came out on HBO Max. I'm loving HBO Max right now. I feel like it's my new Netflix. Um, but they have Pitch Perfect on there and it makes me so happy. I love that movie so much. And I almost just wanted to be like, it was amazingly horrible. I hate you. <laughs> oh man, I finally got Juan to watch that all the way through. I managed to get him to watch like the first 15 minutes before we got married. Um, but he wasn't in the mood for it. So I had to turn it off. So he finally, um, watch it with me all the way through and he liked it so that made me happy um yeah okay i don't think i have much time left as uh we wrap this up i think i'm about to get into the the final reveals so um i will catch you in the conclusion of this video Right, guys thank you so much for sticking around to the end and watching this video um i really appreciate it every minute of watch time helps my channel so so much um and if you watch my goals for 2021 video then you already know that my goal for this year is to reach a thousand subscribers um so if you aren't subscribed already i would really appreciate um if you would do so all my socials are linked below and all that stuff so like comment subscribe you know what to do and don't quit your daydream bye